Okay, let's begin our discussion of pharmacokinetics proper. Pharmacokinetics is the study of the effects that the body has on drugs. Sometimes these effects are summarized in the acronym ADME. A for absorption, D for distribution, M for metabolism, and E for excretion. That is, pharmacokinetics is the study of how drugs are absorbed, distributed, metabolized, and finally excreted from the body. Pharmacodynamics, on the other hand, is the study of effects that drugs have on the body, and also the study of the mechanism of action of different drugs. We'll talk more about pharmacodynamics later in this lecture. For now, let's begin our discussion of those four important equations that relate to pharmacokinetics. Remember, I said that the four equations were the equations for volume of distribution, clearance, and the loading dose and maintenance dose, which we'll talk about on the next slide. On this slide, we'll also discuss half-life. For each of these concepts, you should be sure to memorize the equation. The equation is our definition of the concept, and once you memorize the equation, you can make sense of the concept itself. To start, the volume of distribution is given by the equation amount of drug in the body over the plasma drug concentration. Realize that the amount of drug in the body is given in units of mass, for example, milligrams. Plasma drug concentration, on the other hand, is a concentration. That is, it is given in the units mass over volume. Mass divided by mass over volume, of course, leaves us with just the volume. This is the first important thing to realize about the volume of distribution. As its name suggests, its units are given in volume, and often in liters. Let's say that we've given somebody 1,000 milligrams of drug X. Now suppose we came back some time later and measured the amount of drug in their plasma. Say we found the concentration to be 200 milligrams for every one liter of plasma. This would give us a volume of distribution equal to 5 liters, which is relatively low. And by that we mean that most of the drug that we've given resides in the blood, or the plasma, meaning that it has not been distributed to other parts of the body. And this can often occur when drugs are hydrophilic, that is, when they are very polar and soluble in water. On the other hand, if we came back to this patient and say that we only found one milligram of the drug per one liter plasma, the volume of distribution would be 1,000 liters, which is actually more plasma than a human body has. We would say that this drug has a very high volume of distribution, meaning that very little of it is found in the plasma, and most of the drug has redistributed into other body tissues. For example, body fat or the brain. You might be asking how it's possible that we calculated a number like 1,000 liters. Well, the thing to remember about the volume of distribution is that it's a theoretical calculation. It simply gives us a sense of how much drug remains in the plasma versus how much of it has moved to other parts of the body. And of course, we make the calculation by starting with the amount of drug that we administered. Finally, it's important to note that the volume of distribution of plasma protein bound drugs can be altered by liver and kidney disease. In order for some drugs to be carried in the plasma, they must be bound to some proteins. They often must be bound by plasma proteins such as albumin. Albumin, of course, is produced by the liver. In cases of liver disease where the production of albumin is impaired, these drugs, which rely on proteins for their transport in the blood, can no longer remain in the blood and instead diffuse out into body tissues. This, of course, would increase the apparent volume of distribution. In cases of severe kidney disease, oftentimes plasma proteins such as albumin can be lost in the urine, and this, too, decreases the amount of albumin which is available for binding. Okay, let's move on to a discussion of clearance. Clearance is the rate at which a certain volume of plasma is completely cleared of a drug per unit time. In other words, say that we have one liter of plasma. And this liter is filled up with drug, which I'm just depicting as little dots here. Clearance would tell us the amount of time required to remove all the drug 
from this one liter of plasma. And thus is given in the units volume over time, often milliliters per minute. So in our example here, if it took one minute to clear all the drug from one liter of plasma, we would say that our clearance is 1,000 milliliters per minute. In words, notice that the clearance is the elimination rate of a drug divided by the plasma drug concentration. The rate of elimination, of course, is given in the units mass over time. That is, we're asking how much drug is being eliminated per unit time. Plasma drug concentration, of course, is given in mass over volume, which when we simplify, we get back to our original unit of volume over time. So again, clearance is not the amount of drug that's being eliminated per unit time, but the volume of plasma that is being cleared of all drug per unit time, which again is typically given in the units milliliter per minute. Finally, let's talk about half-life. Half-life is the amount of time required for the concentration of a drug to have. In other words, if we have a drug whose plasma concentration is 100 milligrams per milliliter, the half-life would tell us how long it would take until the concentration were 50 milligrams per milliliter. If we waited that same amount of time, we would see that a plasma drug concentration halved once more down to 25 milligrams per milliliter, and so on. The half-life for a drug is given by the equation that you see here. The half-life equals a coefficient of 0 0.7 times the volume of distribution for that drug over the clearance. Remember that half-life is given in units of time. Let's quickly work that out to prove to ourselves that this equation is true. Again, the half-life is equal to a coefficient which has no units, times the volume of distribution, which we know is given in volume, divided by the clearance, which is given in volume over unit time. Simplifying, we see that this equation for half-life indeed results in the correct units, that is, time. Next, let's move on to a discussion of loading dose and maintenance dose, which also employ the equations for volume of distribution and clearance.